follow all of my days Every day you give me strength to follow after your way Cause you give me the power to never give up You give me your power and it's more than enough I made my decision, quitting's not an option No matter how hard it gets, I know I'm in Cause you give me the power Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about grit, while we take a look at the story of someone who had to craft their way out of a tight situation. Hey, I'm Sebastian. And I'm Skylar. What does grit mean, Skylar? Grit is refusing to give up when life gets hard. I think I deserve a grit award. What for? Yesterday, my little cousin lost her tooth swimming at the Y. I spent half an hour diving for it. I found it for her. That's very gritty. It was at the bottom of the deep end. So weird. When we swim, our teeth float with us, but a tiny tooth by itself? Sinks. I think this calls for a float challenge. Let's try it. It's water. What should we test to see if it floats? I've opened up the chat for suggestions. Fluffy cookie? wants us to try pumpkin. Uh, do we have a pumpkin? We have a pumpkin. Sink or float? I say sink. It floats? No way. This is insane. How? It's, it's like a watermelon, basically. Kinda like that. <laughs> Hold on, what's this? Wookies are people too, want us to use. Pop? Oh, soft drink. Diet or regular? Doesn't matter, um, both. Sink or float? If a ginormous pumpkin can float, I say the soda floats. <sighs> what? Diet floats, regular sinks. They're the same size can with the same amount of liquid. I feel like everything's upside down. Uh, do we have time for more? Speed, Speed round. round. Soap. 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 <sighs> Bowling ball. ball. Bowling ball. Bowling ball. Bowling ball. Bowling ball. Oh, this is heavy. Okay. Okay. It floats? What? Rubber chicken. Wow. I thought it was going to sink. But why? None of it makes sense. Density. You're calling me dense? No. Some objects sink and others float because of density. Oh, I don't get it. Okay. Every object is made up of tiny molecules. In some objects, the molecules are packed tightly together, and other objects, the molecules are more loosely packed. That's density. The more dense an object, the more likely it is to sink. So a tiny tooth is dense and sinks. 
And the sugar in a regular soft drink is dense and makes it sink too. But diet soda is less dense and floats. You are not dense. I have been known to float. Now it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the second book of the Old Testament, Exodus. God created everyone and everything, but people turned away from God. Still, God made a plan to bless the whole world through Abraham and Sarah's family. Their great-grandson, Joseph, was sold into slavery in Egypt. But after many hard years, Joseph was made second in command of Egypt and saved his whole family from starving. Over the years, Joseph's family, the Israelites, grew and grew. Until the Egyptian king, Pharaoh, got scared. That's where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, everyone. So the Egyptian pharaoh was scared. There were so many Israelites, he thought they might join the Egyptians' enemies. So pharaoh forced the Israelites into slavery. And that's the way it was for hundreds of years. But no matter how hard the Egyptians made the Israelites work, Hebrew families still continue to grow. Preposterous! I declare that all Hebrew baby boys must be thrown into the Nile River. I know. This was terrible news. God had promised to bless the whole world through the Israelites. But not only were they enslaved now, they were in danger of being completely wiped out. And in the middle of all this, a woman from the tribe of Levi, Jochebed, and her husband Amram were about to have a brand new baby! Where does this part go? So insert part F at right angles with part M before locking part Z. Pyramids have got nothing on crib assembly. So if Jochebed gave birth to a baby girl, they wouldn't need to worry about Pharaoh's law. But when Jochebed had her baby, you guessed it. It's a boy! Pharaoh is not touching this baby. So for three months, Jochebed and Amram and their daughter Miriam hid the new baby boy. That. Uh, no puppy. Uh, nothing to see here. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. They tried, but after three months, there was just no way to keep hiding a baby boy with a healthy set of lungs. Jochebed wove a basket out of tall grass and coated it with tar. Give him to me now. But they'll still hear the baby in the basket. Come with me. Jochebed was so determined to save her baby that she made a risky and very creative move, might I add. Are we giving our baby a bath? Nope. We are giving him a chance. Now stay close by and make sure he's safe. So maybe Jochebed figured this was a place no one would come? Or maybe she knew it was the favorite bathing spot of Pharaoh's daughter. And sure enough, Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to bathe. Bring me that basket at once. I mean, Miriam must have been terrified, right? But she stayed hidden and watched to see what might happen. Poor thing. This must be one of the Hebrew babies. Miriam gathered every ounce of courage she had and ran up to Pharaoh's daughter. Would you like me to get one of the Hebrew women to take care of him for you? Yes, yes, that's a perfect idea. This was the best news! So Miriam ran home as fast as she could and told her mother everything that happened. Then together, they returned to the princess. Take this baby and feed him for me. I'll pay you. I promise I will treat him like my very own son. And she got paid! Jochebed was able to care for her son at home. And when he grew up, she took him to live at the palace with the pharaoh's daughter. The princess called him Moses, a word that meant to draw out, because she pulled the baby out of the water. Get it? The end. That's amazing. I mean, there's no way Moses' mom could have known her baby would be safe. Yes, but... Amram and Jochebed didn't give up. I mean, they held on. They didn't know what to do, but they got creative. And they took the next step. So what's our part in the story? Well, things in our lives can feel really big and difficult too. Yeah, I got assigned to this group project at school and I had no idea where to start. I just wanted to quit the whole thing. What happened? Well, I prayed about it and asked for help. 
and eventually everyone joined in and it actually turned out okay. See? Yes! When you aren't sure what to do next, ask God for help. We can also think about how we can follow Jesus during difficult times. We can start by loving God and loving others. Whether it's a friendship in trouble or a fight with your parents, you can hold on. Stay with it. God will be with you, even when things get messy. I think you guys got it. I'll see you next time. Bye. 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 So here's the thing. Hold on, even when you don't know what to do. That's how grit grows. Sink or float? Sink. <laughs> it floats. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. We'll see you next time. Uh. <laughs> 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 last time. <laughs> oh, it sunk.